On this episode of UTR, we get another warm welcome in from the fine folks in Frankenmuth. We'll chow on some cheese, get lost in a maze, bag a Bavarian burger, and have fun down on the farm. Heck, we'll even toast a new happy place where you can turn German in style. Get ready to explore the cool mention, Orta und Dinge, that make Frankenmuth a great place to be. Along the way is where we find the unexpected. Along the way is where we take in the scenery, and often where we have the most fun. Sure, along the way can be the place we stop to fill up or grab a bite to eat. But in Michigan, along the way becomes the place we've been longing for. Because enjoying the journey is always pure Michigan. Your trip begins at Michigan.org. A visit to the Stahls Automotive Museum will take you back to a time when cars were more than just a way to get around. In addition to beautiful cars, enjoy the collection of gas pumps, road signs, oil cans, and other car-related accessories. Info at stallsauto.com. There's something special about the pride, the skill, and the passion it takes to build something great. The Construction Association of Michigan, CAM, understands that passion and has been providing contractors with the resources they need since 1885. I've been around the world, but there's one place I keep coming back to. And the more I explore, the more I realize it's the place to be. I'm Tom Dalton, and this is Under the Radar, Michigan. You know, all my life I thought I was half Italian and half Irish. And then I went and got my DNA checked. Turns out I'm part German, too. Ach du lieber. But lucky for me, we've got Frankenmuth right here in Michigan. So I can save the price of a plane ticket and get in touch with my German genealogy right here at home. That's right. This walkable town is all things German with great shops, cool restaurants, and tons of fun things to see and do. It's a virtual bucket of Bavaria. And if you've got a list, this is the place to lighten it. So let out your later hosen, because you're about to make some new friends in Frankenmuth. Frankenmuth is located in Michigan's Mitten, just south of Saginaw and east of I-75. You'll know it when you see it. It's got a beautiful downtown full of happy people doing German stuff. Now I've been accused of being kind of cheesy, but after you see this segment, you won't think I'm cheesy at all. And that's because here at the new and improved Cheese House, they have more cheese than you can shake a fondue factory at. To be more precise, they've got about 11 billion different kinds of cheese. And they just went through a $6 million renovation. So if cheese pleases you, this place will float your culinary boat. Now, in order for me to quell my curiosity, I spent some time with Cheese Meister General, Tammy Rada. So you've been here 36 years? Yes, I've been with the company for 36, 36 years. 36 years. I hope you like cheese. Love cheese. Well, yes, I love cheese. <laughs> <laughs> because this place is, I mean, if you love cheese, this is paradise. Yes, it is. It's a cheese lover's paradise. And how many different kinds of cheese do you guys have? We have about 180 different types of cheese. Now, a, a lot of people know this who live in town, but the Cheese House has been here how many years now? Um, the Cheese House has been here 50 years. We just celebrated our 50th anniversary last year, so we're here 51 years. And I understand that, that the Cheese House was the first building actually to build, be built in the Bavarian style here. Yes, Georgia. yes. Tiny Zender um, brought the German Bavarian heritage and look to Frankenmuth. So it was celebrated and the Cheese House was one of the first buildings. Now everybody's copying you guys. Exactly. <laughs> Everybody wants to be like the Cheese House. Now you have some pretty unusual cheese. You make your own cheeses as well, right? We do. We make uh, spreads. We make seven different spreads, yeah. including garlic and bacon and a few jalapenos. And you even make a chocolate cheese? Oh, we make flavored cheeses. Five different flavored cheeses. We make a chocolate, yeah. chocolate peanut butter, chocolate mint, blueberry, and strawberry. Cheese? Cheese. Wow. What do you think a chocolate cheese tastes like? Uh, yeah, like a cheesy chocolate? Kind of like that. Yeah. Think Tootsie Roll. The Cheese House really is, when you think of Frankenmuth, no, you think no, of the no. Cheese House, because this really is one of the founding businesses here. What does that feel like, personally, to have been here this long? It is, it's such a part of me. Yeah. Um, I feel, I've been with this business for so long that 
I grew up with this business, yeah. so I really feel like it's a, it's just me. It's a part of me. Right. And the customers as well. I mean, you have customers who come in regularly, and it's like, hey, how are you doing? And you know your customers by name, and you develop those relationships, and people who've come back year after year after year. So it's, yeah, it's uh, just, just becomes a part of who you are. So you mentioned you have how many different kinds of cheese? 180. 180? Yes. I'm going shopping. Yes, let's do it. Well, you don't have to ask me twice, so I quickly commenced to some cheese choosing. Uh, that, 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 yeah. Oh, I need one of these. <laughs> yeah, and one of these. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Green, orange, and purple. Yes, Eric will love these. Merry Christmas. Summer sausage. Oh, samples. <laughs> mm, mm, darn it. Oh, oh perfect. This store really is amazing, and they have so much more than just cheese here that your head will spin. So if you're looking to choose some cheddar, have some Havarti, select some Swiss, or get some Gouda, check out the Cheese House in Frankenmuth. It's a cheese lover's paradise. Heck, they even have cheese I don't know I like yet. But I'll fix that, because I'm going to taste them all. Mmm, <laughs> cheese. You know, I don't have a lot of mirrors at my house because they kind of remind me of what I look like. But we found a place in Frankenmuth that has so many mirrors, you'll be amazed. <laughs> Actually, it is a maze. It's called the Ultimate Mirror Maze Challenge, and it's reflective fun for the whole family. Ever want to see countless reflections of yourself in every direction? Encounter surprising corners, dead ends, and continuous circles? Well, this place will literally melt your mind and get you so confused that you may never find your way out. Well, just kidding about that part, but this place is absolutely a baffling blast. Now, to make sure I find my way both in and out of this mirror maze, I first found out how it all works from Sarah Gorsuch. Okay, Sarah with an H. Should I be as scared to go in there? I wouldn't be scared, right? but I definitely wouldn't run. <laughs> yeah, good point. <laughs> um, I don't suppose you get many vampires here, do you? No. no. I mean, kids always think they're going to pop out at them, but we never see anybody. <laughs> this is my first time at a mirror maze. What should I expect when I go in there? Expect to be disoriented, maybe, for a second. Yeah. You go in, you know, once you start walking, you are you go through, like, stages. Like, at first it's pretty cool, and then it's kind of, like, what's going on, and then it's kind of creepy. And then you're looking for sweet freedom to get out the exit. <laughs> so... Do you ever have to go in there and find somebody and bring them out? I've never had to do that. Every every single customer or group of customers always asks us that, yeah. if, we're gonna, if we can come in and save them. So we just tell them, if you feel the need, you can yell for help, and we'll come in and get you. But I've honestly never had to do it. And you can stay in there as long as you either want to or you need to because you can't find your way out, Both, right? yes. Um, the longest I've ever seen anybody in there was 45 minutes. Really? Yeah, I had a gentleman that came in here and he was he got pretty confused. I offered to go, I said, do you need help? And he just, he was like, nope, I got it. And so he had a great time and he came back several times that day. Really? Yeah. So families, I mean, I, like you said, kids love it. But do, oh, absolutely. So people my age like it too? Oh yeah, it's for everybody. Um, we get families that go all the way from babies to great, great grandmothers. I've had a lady in here the other day, she was 96 in her wheelchair. They were pushing her through. Really? And I, she was laughing and having a great time. Because I can get disoriented just eating breakfast. So. <laughs> so, oh. I mean, if you're claustrophobic right. or something of that nature, it might not be for you. You know, claustrophobic people, they get in there and they kind of tense up. But if you're in for new experiences, it's a great thing. It's it's fun to do. How many mirrors are in there? It's too many to count for me. <laughs> I've <laughs> never you, tried. You have to clean them all, which is why the kids all wear gloves, right? Because, yes. Yeah. Um, the gloves are to keep down the fingerprints and the germs. And the face prints. <laughs> yes. Well, can't really stop those. We tell them not to run. A lot of them stop to read our, our caution signs and things that yeah. say, you know, please go slow. Um, but that way they keep their hands out, they can feel around, they don't leave the fingerprints, the germs. And plus, if you see fingerprints in there, it's really not a lot of fun for the people that come in after you, because it gives them clues where to go. Well, I'm going to try it. Okay. Uh, and if I if I never come out, call my wife and tell her I like her. I mean, tell, don't tell her I love her. <laughs> tell her I love her. And uh, my safe word is mommy. So if mommy. you hear somebody screaming mommy, you're going to have to come get me. I okay? might ignore you. I mean, I'm used to drowning that word out. I'm gonna try. Here goes nothing. You ready? Okay. Okay, here goes. 
Ow. <laughs> Gosh, I'm all ready. Oh, here we go. Oh, boy. Well, if you get hurt, it's not my fault. Oh, well, thanks. <laughs> I'm telling you, when you're in this maze, you see yourself so many times, it's like deja vu all over again, and again, and again. And believe me, it really is tough to figure out where the heck you are and which way is what. Right, right, left, right, nope, nope, there's me, left, 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 and oh, no, can't go that way, there's me. Oh, nope, nah, I can't go that way. Oh, darn it. Wait a minute. <laughs> I'm really lost. Where the heck am I? Oh, there's something. Look, I'm over there, and I'm over there. Excuse me, sir. Oh, it's me. Darn it. So if you're up for it, and you uh, don't mind seeing yourself from every imaginable angle, take the ultimate mirror maze challenge in Frankenmuth. Heck, it took me so long to find my way out, you might still see my reflection in there. Oh, and there. <laughs> oh, and over there. Wait, where am I? Mommy. Now, if you've got a Wayback Machine, you know that way back in season one, we featured a place here in Frankenmuth that sells a substantial selection of savory sausages. It's called Willie's Sausage Company, and they've been making awesome and authentic German sausages since way back in 1905. And every time we're in town, it's one of our go-to places. Well, the new owners thought outside the box, ventured outside their building, and opened a brand new walk-up Bavarian burger joint right downtown called Nuremberger's. Keith Gear is the guy who brained up these burgers, so he's just the guy to ask how it all happened. Okay, Keith, I'm guessing that because you own Willie's, yes. which, by the way, is a staple for us. Every time we come to town, we stop and get sausage there. That's I'm guessing, I'm guessing because you own that place, this has got to be really good meat. It is. It comes directly from Willie's. We make all the patties, make the burger. Oh, yeah. I mean, I can tell. Well, the, some of these patties look different. This one looks like it's got, like, stuff in it. Yeah, this is a jalapeno cheddar. Ah. This is a bacon cheddar. Okay. And this is our German sausage. Ah, yeah, yeah. So, well, that's the actual Nuremberg. That's the actual Nuremberg. So it's our Nuremberg sausage made into a patty. I was going to ask you, what inspired you to move from Willie's, the store, venture outside and open a, a walk-up place like this? Well, what, what we wanted to do is do a food truck. So this is a baby step to that. We can develop our business model for that. You're going to put wheels on it's this thing? No, it's walk-up, but it's, it's just like a food truck. So now we can figure everything out and then start from there. Well, so. street food has become so popular now. Yeah, People exactly. love just grabbing good food, good food and being able to walk and sit in the park or go over with it. So this is a great concept. Um, should I just flip this now? Yeah, or you got to do something, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah I, you're, I, just I, not, you're just I, not another pretty place. i got to earn my keep. Um, what, are, what are the challenges of having um, a walk-up place like this? Well, it's the traffic, yeah. for one thing, right? And it's mainly it's employees. Yeah. Employees is critical. Oh, I heard Uncle Bob's been giving you some trouble. <laughs> yeah. right. You have to have good employees, and I haven't found one yet. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Uncle Bob. <laughs> well, you guys make your own sauces? Make your, I mean, you guys are ground yes, up. We, we are. We, we're a complete business package. We got sauces from Uncle Bob, all the sauces you meet from Willie, so we're a complete package. Wow, wow, wow. Now, why'd you name it Nuremberger's? Why not Hamburger's? Or was that already taken? Well, no, it's, <laughs> That's it's, another city in Germany. Because the thing that we wanted to do is take a spin on brats, right? We have our brats, yeah. but we wanted to have a different spin on it. So we wanted to make brats burgers. So anything that's German, so Nuremberg, everybody knows Nuremberg, Germany. Yep. And then burgers, it ties that all in. So Nuremberger, German mm. burger. Well, speaking of Willie's again, I mean, that place is an iconic, I mean, that's, I mean, it's been part of Frankwood forever. Yeah, it's 114 years. And you've owned it for how long? Four years. So you're carrying on, that's that's pretty serious. I mean, that's a big oh, responsibility yeah, to ca carry on that kind of tradition. And we get people coming in generation after generation. We have great grandfather, grandfather, father, and son. They all come together, and they've been doing it for 40 some odd years. Well, they started a new tradition here with they this. They want to do that, yep. Yeah. Definitely. So you guys ready to eat? Yeah. Oh, you're talking to the UTR crew, ready to eat. We were ready yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> So if you're on the street and you need to fuel your feet, get something good to eat and find a seat at Nuremberger's. You'll feel right at home with all your new German best friends. <laughs> Wunderbar! Now here's a couple of official UTR travel tips for you. 
If you're in town with some tots, or your adult sweet tooth is tugging at you, don't forget to stop by Rao's Country Store right downtown. They've got a cool, eclectic collection of, well, everything, not to mention an incredible array of classic candies that'll make you feel like Andy's your uncle and you grew up in Mayberry. Another sweet place to slide into is the Frankenmuth Taffy Kitchen. Uh, yes, honey, I'll bring some home. They've got brittle, fudge, popcorn, and yes, 23 fantastic flavors of freshwater taffy. Heck, you can even watch them making it. Wow, looks like flubber, but tastes oh so good. Mmm, sugar. Now, when German immigrants founded Frankenmuth, they didn't just make great beer and bratwurst, they were also great farmers. And proof positive of that is Grandpa Tiny's farm just south of downtown Frankenmuth. This is where family meets the farm and kids of all ages can have a rural good time. Jonathan and Wendy Winkle are the young couple who brought their kids here so many times that they decided to stay and run the place. I keep hearing farm animals. Yes. Yes, you're gonna be hearing them crow <laughs> for a while. The whole day, yes. Is the story, see there's one yes. right there. Is the story true that you guys came here so much with your kids you ended up just running the place? Correct. Explain how that even works. So the previous managers uh, were retiring, and uh, we were coming up here for many years. Kids absolutely loved it. It became a part of the reason why we were coming to Frankenmuth. When we found out they were retiring, we didn't want to see this place go. And uh, so Wendy, <laughs> on a whim, said, said, well, what about what us? About us? And, and I kind of did like a side glance at him. He didn't say I no. I just shrugged, and, so... and then here we are. So they wrote down our number. We had an uh, interview with the family, and yeah, that next season, uh, they essentially handed over the keys. Seriously, on a whim, you just looked at each other and said, let's just do this. Well, because, I, Aunt Wendy, I know you grew up on a farm, right? <laughs> <laughs> Not so much. Well, what is it like taking over something like this that's an institution? There's so much history here, and to be able to be a part of that is very humbling. And also maintaining it, that's, that's a huge responsibility that I, I couldn't wait to take over. And Wendy, it was, I understand, your idea to paint the barn blue, which I think is brilliant. <laughs> Thank you for saying that, <laughs> yes. Um, and we did get some flack because, of course, barns should be red or brown. Um, but we wanted it Bavarian blue. We wanted to tie the farm more into the rest of the town. And I think it just turned out wonderfully. Now, you guys have uh, children's programs. Explain how the, it's a real working farm, right? Correct, yes. But you also have, it's a petting farm. Mm -hmm. and So the side of the agro-tourism side of the house is uh, we're trying to branch out more so to bring the kids out of the city to show them essentially where some of their food comes from. Kind of reconnect those generations again. So we, we have the farming aspects of it, we have the educational component, which is huge, and we want to make sure we try to continue that as well. well. There's no better way, I think, to connect kids to reality than a farm. Yeah. And you've got two kids, right? How are, they, are they loving being on the farm? They do, and we thought there would be like a huge adjustment for them, um, but they took right to it, and they absolutely love the farm. I mean, when it comes to kids, there's dirt and animals out there. It's like, <laughs> what more do you need? Exactly, exactly. and they're, they're static. I, I meant to ask you earlier, who's Grandpa Tiny? <laughs> so William Zender uh, would have been junior, so uh, he's also the founder of the Bavarian Inn. So through, through their family, through the foundation, the William and Dorothy Zender Foundation, that is assisting us throughout this process. So he's so. the man that's credited yeah. with making Frankenmuth Bavarian. Being city people, where did you guys get the passion for this? Because working on a farm is, you, pro you probably don't sleep much. Um, there's, I mean, you hear animals screaming all the time. There's, I, I mean, where do you get that well, passion? The passion comes from knowing how we grew up and what we didn't get to experience. And so that kind of fuels our passion of being able to do this and share it with others because we know what they're missing out on. Well, I have to say, it, I really get a kick out of the fact that young people like you are continuing traditions like this because if you didn't, all this stuff would disappear. So, and you'd have to rely on old people like me all the time. So <laughs> thanks a lot for what you guys are doing. Thank you. Thank you. We had so much fun with all of the animals and I learned so much about farming that I almost forgot I was a city slicker. This really is an absolutely wonderful place to spend the day with your family. And I have to say that nothing really grounds you more than spending some time on a real working farm. So if you get the chance, stop by Grandpa Tiny's farm in Frankenmuth. You'll be glad you did. <laughs> 
Now, if you've been to Frankenmuth a few times, but you're looking for a new happy place, <laughs> I've got one word of advice for you. Prost. In German, the word Prost means cheers. But here in Frankenmuth, it means an awesome place to meet friends and family for good wine, awesome edibles, cool cocktails, and a great atmosphere. It's called Prost Wine Bar and Charcuterie. And barring any interruptions, it's where me and the fellers plan to spend the next few hours. Zach McClellan and his wife Karina had a dream. Then they added some wine and a selection of fine cured meats and cheeses to it, and voila, they're living it. How did you end up in Frankenmuth with a really cool wine and charcuterie place? Well, funny story, so my wife is 100% Italian. You oh, know, so, mine too. Okay. Um, it, really? Well, yeah. kind of half. <laughs> so, you know, um, yeah, so she's she's never lived in Frankenmuth, just visited and things like that. But every time we'd go to her family's house, they would always, I mean, you wake up for breakfast, you're going to have cured meats, some fruit, and you're going to have wine. You know, you do it at lunch, it's the same thing. And uh, we just fell in love with it. You know, when we'd go to her house and, and her families or cousins, we just loved the fact that they would just have fresh foods, cured meats, and wine, and we wouldn't watch TV. You know, they'd play on an accordion and play, and we'd end up talking and having fun. And, um, you know, when we came back home, or when I moved back home to help my family in the candy business, um, we we really missed a place to go with wine. Frankly, is a wonderful, you know, beer city. And so we felt like we could maybe help with the wine aspect of it. Yeah, until I met Jim and Eric and started doing this show, I didn't even know what charcuterie was. I thought, what's a charcuterie? What's, why does a shark need it? Well, that was, the, that was kind of the key. I didn't even know what it was either when we started it. No, I'm just joking. But <laughs> we put that in the name for the reason of we wanted people to instantly try to engage and try something new. Right. So we wanted them to have to ask, what is charcuterie? Right. You know? Right. And then that gave us the chance, we felt like, to, to start the experience of a whole meal of trying something different. We wanted them to try different wines, and we wanted to help try to educate people with our staff. So that was exactly why we did that. Now, the wine. If you need somebody, if you need a wine taster, on staff, I'm your, your guy. Man. Yeah, I'm your guy. Love yeah. it. <laughs> but yeah, um, who picks the wine? So, uh, you know, um, we have an awesome staff, and uh, three of them have gone through the first level to be a psalm, and they just are really enthusiastic about it. Yeah, for and, you folks at home, a psalm is a sommelier, which is a wine expert. Yes, right? yes. Which I want to be someday. Um, yeah, I'm working so, towards it. I'm, so we collaborate. You know, I think it's funny when reps come along. You know, there's usually like four or five of us. Yeah. And uh, but we always embrace it. We talk about it, and then we pick it just on how we like it. Yeah. This got to be fun having a place this nice. You know what? It, it, it is. We have a really good time. We're lucky. We have a small staff. Everybody gets along really good, and they really, it sounds cheesy to say it, right? But right. we well, really have well, good... the cheese house is right across the street, exactly, so don't worry about exactly. it. <laughs> so, but we really have a lot of good people, and, the, and they make it a lot of fun. They're really into what they do, and that makes it fun for us, too. Well, whoever designed the inside is incredible, and this outside patio area is, I mean, this place is made for me. Hey, thank you. I only, I'm yeah. only an hour and a half from here, so you'll see me again. Exactly. It's a quick trip. You know, once you hop on 75, before you know it, you're getting off at our exit, so. Can I practice my wine drinking here for my sommelier test? 100%. We have three of them. They'll test you tonight. No, I don't think tonight's a good idea. I got, <laughs> I, I got, I got some more studying to do. Yes, no problem. Well, now that I know my way around a charcuterie plate and can even spell it, I have to say that the guys and I ate and drank like a bunch of Bavarian bosses. And with the atmosphere here, it was the perfect way to end a long and crazy day, like we'd have it any other way. So if you'd like to add a certain level of sophistication to your journey to becoming German, come toast the fine folks at Prost, because they have everything you need for that gesture to succeed. And even if you're just a little Germanic, don't panic, because the town of Frankenmuth's got you covered. Heck, even if you're not German at all, you'll still have a ball in Michigan's own little Bavaria. Ein Bonus. Along the way is where we find the unexpected. Along the way is where we take in the scenery and often where we have the most fun. Sure, along the way can be the place we stop to fill up or grab a bite to eat. But in Michigan, along the way becomes the place we've been longing for. Because enjoying the journey is always pure Michigan. 
Your trip begins at Michigan.org. A visit to the Stahls Automotive Museum will take you back to a time when cars were more than just a way to get around. In addition to beautiful cars, enjoy the collection of gas pumps, road signs, oil cans, and other car-related accessories. Info at StahlsAuto.com. There's something special about the pride, the skill, and the passion it takes to build something great. The Construction Association of Michigan, CAM, understands that passion and has been providing contractors with the resources they need since 1885. 